Hello everyone and welcome to Introduction to Research. My name is Aditi and this is Dr. K.P. Mohanan, who we fondly call Mo. For people who don't know what THINK is, can you tell them a little bit about it? THINK is a group of people who are committed to improving our own thinking abilities and query abilities and also helping others to improve their thinking and inquiry abilities. Uh, we, are not a, we are not an NGO, we are not an institution, we are just a collective of people. And it's spelled T-H-I-N-Q, but pronounced think, not think you. All right. And what is Introduction to Research all about? Uh, introduction to Research is an attempt to fill a gap that has always existed in mainstream education. Um, we have educational programs that aim to communicate a body of knowledge, help students understand the body of knowledge, apply it and so on. And also we have some provision in higher education, for example, in, in masters and PhD, to help students develop research abilities in particular disciplines, typically through apprenticeship to a supervisor. We don't have any program to help secondary school students or undergraduate students develop research abilities to become capable of doing specialized research in any area. So I'm talking about research across domains. We call it transdisciplinary education. So we will include uh, all the means of knowledge ranging from mathematics to physical sciences, biological sciences, human sciences, humanities, and it will also be useful for others in, for example, in law, medicine, engineering, and so on. That's the idea. This was a course that I was teaching at ISA Pune. I have been teaching it as a regular face-to-face -face course, but now that uh, because of COVID and so on, we have to do this as an online course. So we decided why not, you know, open it to everybody. That was the idea. So more, you mentioned research abilities. What are research abilities? Can you give us a couple of examples of research abilities? Yes. Research is um, a process that aims at contributing to current body of knowledge in academia. Now, obviously, you cannot expect first year undergraduate students to do that because they don't have the background knowledge specialization to do that. So we focus on the process. This would include uh, things like how do I find a research question or research problem? What kind of uh, strategies can I use to find an answer or a solution? How do I implement those strategies? Um, how do I arrive at conclusions from the answers uh, that I arrive at or the solutions that I come up with? What kind of conclusions can I come up with? How do I establish these conclusions to the satisfaction of the research community? How do I think critically about my own research? How do I think critically about the research findings of other people? How do I integrate different bodies of knowledge? So these are some of the, uh, some of the components of research and you could include as specific details. Uh, take for example, the distinction between causation and correlation, which you find in all forms of scientific research or deducing consequences of assumptions, which is an important part of mathematics, also part of uh, philosophy, and interestingly, also part of science. So we have to show how these are part of philosophy, mathematics, science, engineering, all of them. How do you detect logical contradictions? Again, these are transdisciplinary abilities. These are some of the, some of the aspects of uh, research across disciplines. Introduction to Research is a 12-week course. Mo, could you give us a broad outline of the kinds of subjects we'll be covering each week? Um, there'll be 12 weeks and 12 sessions, one-hour sessions. And each session will have a chapter from a textbook on research. So what we expect is for students to go through the chapter before the session. This is unlike what typically happens in a course. Uh, we are going to use what we call a flipped classroom methodology. That is, students learn from textbooks prior to the class session and then ask questions. We want to maximize interaction and fruitfully use that time 
for things that cannot be done through a textbook. So the, uh, the chapters, each chapter will cover one of the topics. I'm not going to list all the topics, but the first chapter will be on something like what is research? Uh, we give a brief idea of the different aspects of research, nature of research, nature of academic knowledge and inquiry and so on. The second chapter will be on the research methodologies. How do you look for answers or find solutions to problems? There will be a chapter on, or at least maybe one or two chapters on theory construction. And this is important in uh, domains like scientific inquiry, which includes uh, observational inquiry, by which what I mean is experimental inquiry, statistical inquiry, instrumentation, and so on. These are parts of observation. And also theory construction. Uh, it will also have chapters on mathematical inquiry, at least one chapter on mathematical inquiry. These chapters are meant to give students a brief taste of what research is like in these cases. I don't think they will be uh, master researchers in a 12 week program. This will have to continue. In fact, continue all the way to specialized research at a later stage. This is just a, an introduction. You can find a detailed version of the course timetable on the course web page. So this is an online video course. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your strategies to help students learn? through this course? As I mentioned, this has two or three components. One component is the textbook itself. They have to read the chapters, come prepared to discuss uh, the content of the chapters in the, in the session. Each session will be something like 30 minutes to 40 minutes exposition with provision for asking clarificatory questions. And the remaining 20 minutes or 30 minutes will be for the students to ask questions. We will not be able to answer all the questions, but some of them at least. Then, uh, so there's the textbook component and the, the video component. Students will form what we call affinity groups. Affinity groups are groups of students, let's say six or seven or eight, uh, throughout the program to discuss their learning problems, to help each other learn what the others don't understand and so on, and look, work through exercises and so on. So there'll be considerable peer learning happening. Now, we may not be able to intervene in all these cases. We will be watching and intervene only when necessary, but we'll try our best. And what is the best way that students can learn from the course? What advice do you have to offer to them? Yeah, I think for students, it may be best to view this as a learning opportunity. Because since this course doesn't have any exams or assessment, there is no upper limit to learning. I would say that for uh, students to you have some degree of learning, they should invest at least about two or three hours a week beyond the one session, preparing for the course and discussing it and, and so on, various things. So it is up to the students to decide how much time, how much effort they want to invest. So since this course doesn't have any graded assessment, mm -hmm. how do students know that they've learned something from it? Uh, uh, we are also planning to have some kind of self-assessment strategies. And this will be through MCQs, multiple choice questions. But unlike the regular multiple choice questions, we are going to use uh, 20 options or 15 options. And that will give the students some idea of how much they are learning, what they need to learn further and so on. Um, there, there is another way of self-assessment, which is through what I might call, uh, the, the best word will be through sadhakam which is how it is, the word it is used in uh, South Indian classical music and uh, South Indian dance. And I think the word used in the North Indian tradition is riyaz, which means at a fixed time, say in the morning, for example, student allocates an hour or two for practice without any supervision from a teacher. So the student sits and sings, practices. And the singing and dancing can be both external in such a way that somebody can hear but it can also be with closed eyes, you sit and do the singing and dancing in your mind. Exactly the same thing applies to research. You can solve problems and do practice and so on in an external way, also with your friends, but you could also do it when you are having a shower, for example, do, you do your research in your mind. You give presentations, you go through discussions in your mind. You can do that when you're taking a walk, when you are sitting in a bus, any, you're falling asleep, just wake up and do your sadhagam before you fall asleep again. 
So sadhagam becomes a part of your life, the, the sadhagam in your mind, as opposed to the external sadhagam. That is an excellent way of not only learning, but also self-assessment. This is not something that students normally do, but we would like them to go through that practice in this particular course. That's the best way of learning how to do research. With that, would you like to add anything else as advice to the student? Uh, not much, except that we would like to eliminate the, the sort of mystique that goes with the idea of research. People think that research is something highly specialized, what some people think. I want to say that research is something that everybody can do in their life. Uh, and the degree of research, the intensity also might vary. But every person, every educated person uh, should learn how to do research. And it is possible to do so. So I would, I would also like to add, research is not research. That is just going to the library and gathering information. Research means actually thinking. And that thinking is incredibly joyful. So this is a course that invites you to discover the joy of thinking through doing research. I hope that all of you who watch this video would uh, think of joining this course so that you can have the joy of doing research. The details of the first session are in the description of this video. See you soon.